There we go. What's going on? My BRB screen is BR broken. What's up, Pickle? What's happening, brother? What's nice? Can't just be nice. It's got to be great or something. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. There's still a little bit... Uh, I got issues with them, actually. I have a few things I've got to... They're still tweaking. They're... Uh, like, if none of the um, widgets for donos and bits and all that kind of stuff are... They, they all work great, but they're, like, tiny. And to make them big um, is extremely cumbersome and broken. So, But it's getting there. It's getting there. There's supposed to be a way that uh, it can actually come out of the uh, the top overlay bar. Like if someone donates or whatever or follows or something like that, it's supposed to drop out of that. And uh, it's just too tiny. It's unreadable. So um, the other thing is that the uh, if someone does a donation or a um, a subscription, it, yeah, it's just it doesn't uh, it doesn't show up well, so we got to find a better way to to make it work. But I've waited three weeks, four weeks. What's another couple? So, so how was your week? How's your week end? How was it? Today's uh, I think today's stream would be very appropriate for you, brother. The idea of margin or the lack thereof. <clears throat> yeah, I was <laughs> I was watching your stream basically from the from the beginning, and uh, saw you having a bit of a lag issue. I don't know that I've ever really dropped that many frames when when we've streamed here, but I think it's just because we have fiber coming into the building, so we really don't have uh, a whole lot of issues with with uh, bandwidth and and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I never do as well. I think if I'm going to have any issues, it's likely to be a PC-based issue. Seems to be the the root of all my evils. Yeah, fiber rocks, man. It's so nice having uh, having great internet coming into your building. I literally can run um, 20, 25 machines all at once, all running video, uh, like YouTube or streaming even, uh, into the building and I have no bandwidth issues because the other thing that I would say to you, and this is a, this is a something I would look into. I don't know who your provider is there, but a lot of providers have a business um, internet package. And the major difference, I mean, outside of cost, there's, it costs a bit more. One of the major differences, and this is, I wonder if uh, Chaco has doing, done the same thing. Uh, they don't uh, uh, throttle your bandwidth. If you're on a business account, it's wide open. Uh, there's no uh, restrictions with regards to the time of the day or anything like that. Because I suspect that a lot of you guys that because my I never stream from my home. I stream from my my office in the studio here. So I suspect that uh, a lot of you guys are using your home Internet and home Internet is very uh, sub susceptible to how much your what your neighbors are doing. Uh, to your block depends who's in your like where the hookup is where you're in the line of the hookup and um, all that kind of stuff yeah it, it it really is it's worth the extra 50 bucks a month or whatever the heck it costs especially as your channel is growing if like you know you were talking about dropping a bunch of subs last night I don't think that's really what happened but um, 
I don't think your your population is that fickle, but or at least I hope they're not that freaking fickle. Um, but I, I, I really do think that a lot of guys are running home internet when they should be running business internet because this really is a business for you guys, especially when you've got over a couple hundred subs. You really should consider using uh, a different internet source just so they don't, because I guarantee Spectrum or any of those guys are throttling home internets uh, after a certain point especially when you start getting into the, the bandwidth usage that uh, that we get into for some of this stuff. so Because you're not a streaming video, you're, you're connecting video games and, and everything else to the system. So <coughs> yeah, definitely worth looking into. I, I think I pay, I think I'm 170 bucks a month, but I've got like the ultimate business package because of, like I said, the fiber and all that kind of jazz I've got coming in, so. I'm going to wait for a couple more people to show up if anybody shows up. I might be alone today. Usually it takes a few minutes for folks to get here. Um, before I start on the subject of margins, it's a pretty good topic. I think it's something that uh, particularly, I, th I think, honestly, I was thinking of you uh, a little bit when uh, when I started creating this topic because you're a lot like me in the sense that we, we have a lot going on between our regular day jobs and all the extra things that we do. You know, your your Twitter thing that you got going with the videos and editing of that stuff and getting it all ready and recording it all, finding the places and yeah, it can be cumbersome to say the least, especially when you got a family, a very young family, finding margin is, is, uh, is a big deal. Yeah, so I'm just trying, I've been fiddling with these stupid overlays and I'm trying to get my my B right back screen to work and for whatever reason it's not wanting to work. It, it literally won't show up. I don't understand. I've been fiddling with this stuff way too much. Loop, restart, yeah, use hardware encoding. I wonder if I could do a screen so you guys could see what I'm doing. I actually put my email down. Put that there so you guys can see what I'm up to. No, I don't want to do that. So I'm, I'm picking the file. This is the file, BRB. What if I go ending if it'll pick it up? No, I don't want to do that. Cancel. So you can see I'm working on this screen up here. I'm trying to get this media source to change. So I wonder if I put that in, if it'll, if that'll work. Or if I just can't do it on this at all. I wonder if I've got to be on just the page to do it, or if I can't be streaming. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll do this for now. Every loop, restart, local file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just leave it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Live scene. Transition. All right. Okay. Let's get this party started. I ain't got time to fool around. I ain't got no time for this. So today's stream, what are we talking about? Talking about margin. So what is margin? Oh, it's a tough question. All of us have uh, different answers to that as to what we think margin is. 
um, I mean, the, the basic definition of margin is this idea of, of space that we have available to us, right? Uh, beyond what's needed to get the task done. So for example, there's 24 hours in a day, right? We, um, we have an eight hour work day, assumably. We have after school activities for our kids. We have um, our own hockey team that we attend to a couple times a week. All, all the stuff of life. Um, oh, Zacho, thanks for continuing the sub, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome back to the gym. Um, today we're talking about margins. Uh, hopefully you're going to stick around for a little bit. It'd be good to get your opinion on some of this stuff. The idea that uh, um, we all run out of space. We all run out of time. We all run out of the ability to do things well. And margin really is this idea of, of you know, what free time do we have left in a day? And, and, and how does it impact us? You know, the, or the, the lack of that free space impact us in our ability to be, you know, successful in, in, uh, in resting. Cause I'll be honest, this whole stream today is about the idea of rest. And it comes out of this idea that, um, I'm exhausted. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you, this past summer has been, uh, a tremendously busy time for me and for my family, as well as for the nonprofit that, that we run, that we have literally redone everything. And uh, we're, we're working towards this uh, kind of revamped us type of thing. So actually, I want to I wanna fiddle with this a little bit. Yeah, that's what I want. Um, perfect. What's up, Zacho? No problem, buddy. You stay here as long as you can. Um, I see the great topic. You're at work. So let's find some margin for you at work. So, so again, the lack of margin, this idea of flexibility, you're so busy with life. You're so busy with work. You're so busy with, uh, the extracurricular activities, your kids, your wife, your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, uh, all the things that we jam into our day that we, we lose the ability to shut down. We lose the ability to recalculate, to reassess, to reinvest in ourselves, particularly this thing called sleep. <laughs> it's a, it's a known fact that if you're too busy, if you don't have enough time to shut down before you shut down, you will not sleep. You'll never get enough sleep. Your body just will never be able to get to a state where you actually get to rest and to reset. So what we've got to do is we've got to try and find ways to, and I use this term uh, liberally, sprinkle it liberally wherever you see fit, um, to ruthlessly is the term, ruthlessly cut out. Hey, Morgan, uh, welcome back, buddy. Uh, to ruthlessly root out those things that are extra junk. Those things that we just don't need rest. Yeah, <laughs> that's my point. We're talking about this idea of, of margin. You know, how do you how do you ruthless, ruthlessly go through, take stock, full assess, fully assess your day, your life, your week, your month, your year, whatever it is, and say what what am I doing that I either don't need to do, that is a duplicate. It, where am I repeating myself? You know, uh, wh what am I doing now that can legitimately be put off till tomorrow? And, and what am I doing that just has no benefit? It doesn't, it doesn't actually provide me. I'm just filling space because I'm, I'm the type of person that fills space, you know, instead of sitting on the couch and in, in, in relaxing, taking a nap, uh, going to bed at nine o'clock instead of 11 o'clock, because I'm trying to do other two, another two hours worth of things that I should have done, uh, at another time or another space or shouldn't have done at all. Right. Because I'm telling you right now, this something I want you to focus on, this lack of margin, this space that we, we can give to ourselves, it's like a gift you give to yourself, right? This lack of margin, you can't relax? You, well, know this, you're adding stress to your life. 
Now you, Morgmim, there don't get me wrong, there are seasons, right? <clears throat> there are times in your life where you may be busier than other times. But seasons come and go. It's when the season persists that you need to be careful. So right now you're getting ready for a marriage, your school, and all the stuff is going on. You're modding 17 different channels and you shouldn't be. I'm guilty of the same. And so we, we leave no time. And even though the, the modding part, so let's, let's focus there for a second. Even though the modding part is we see it as social and beneficial to us, comes with obligations, right? We think that because we have agreed to this contract, i.e. mod, to monitor our fellow viewers and make sure that they are behaving correctly, to add idle banter and chatter as needed, Even though we've agreed to that, we feel and, and we feel obligated to it, doesn't mean we we should be putting ourselves at risk. And this is where you've seen me step back a little bit from some like Chaco's channel, for example. Oh my gosh, I was literally on his channel almost as much as he was for a year, in while doing everything else that I was doing. Right. In my defense, I was left unsupervised. Yeah. We're adding stress to our lives. For what? We, you know, I, for me, the whole mod thing now is this, it's this idea of I'm willing to step into these roles and to do these things, but understand it's going to be to some varying degree. I'm going to commit to so much time a week. Why? Because I am ruthlessly, again, sprinkle liberally, ruthlessly going to start ripping out things that are not allowing me to add margin to my life. So, hi, Mrs. H. No, you didn't miss me. I'm glad you made it. This is something I think that, the topic that I think will benefit you a lot. I think it benefits everybody, not just one or two people, I think it benefits lots of people. So what does living without margin do? What's, I mean, outside of add stress, what else is, and this is something I think, this again, these are, this is me. We're talking about margin, the lack thereof, and margin being those things uh, in our lives that steal our ability to have downtime, to have free time to rest. Right? So margin is that time when we rest physically and mentally. Living without margin, living without that time to shut down, literally steals your joy. So listen to me for a second. What is, what is your joy, right? So joy is th are those moments when, when you get to be in the midst of those things that bring you happiness that bring you joy. Could be your kids, could be... If you're too busy, if you're too stressed, those, that busyness and that stress is going to steal your joy. So again, it starts with sitting down and actually doing, it's called a time study. Sit down and, and literally, I mean, I've shown you guys my Google Calendar and, and I'll, sh I'll show you again. This is, this is my Google Calendar, guys. Look at that. That is 7 in the morning until 9 o'clock at night. Wait, there's just that space you're seeing right here. Where's my margin? <laughs> Seriously, where's my margin? If I don't get this under control, I am guaranteed to have no joy. Where's my margin to then even do the things that just pop up? So this doesn't even take into account those things that spontaneously erupt. I get a flat tire. 
I, uh, my kid has a meltdown at school and I've got to go and get him at school. Um, I get sick. Right? Do your weird breakdown the other day. I feel no place to speak. But you, you do. Absolutely you do. Because, I mean, they're, they're, the mental is a big part of it, right? When you talk about, because this schedule, and I still have it up on my screen, this schedule is, is a big part of like my mental breakdown. This is where I get stressed out and I'm like, oh my gosh. And Morgan, I wish I could burn it. <laughs> But the problem with my schedule and where being ruthless is hard is everything on here, for the most part, somebody else is depending on me to do something. Right? To support them in some way. So there, there is such thing as too much space, right, Mrs. H? So and we'll, maybe we'll, remind me, we'll get to that, this idea of having too much space, that whole the idea of idle hands theory, right? And, and a lot of our students have that we have here at Rise Above have that exact issue where they, have, they just have too much free time and it's costing them. Um, they're getting in trouble because of it. So living without margin, so let's back up. Living without margin steals your joy because when you look at my schedule, I have no time. Although my son's, S, my son's uh, soccer game at SAU, this is the university he goes to, my son's soccer game is scheduled. It's on there. I know it's there and it's on my calendar. Um, my meeting with, with students, that is just, that is joy. That's sitting with them and, and just enjoying a meal and, and getting to see how they're doing and the success they're having. You know, my other son's game is on there. Um, I'm looking for other joyful moments. <laughs> yeah, there's not many. This this is the challenge. This, even when I schedule moments that are sh that should be joy filled, relaxing moments. Two things ish at, at issue here. One, um, leading up to those moments that are joy-filled, i.e. the soccer games and whatnot. Busyness, tons and tons. So by the time I get to the soccer game, I have no capacity to enjoy <laughs> what's about to take place. And two, because of my personality, my competitive nature, I watch a soccer game and my anxiety goes up. My stress goes up. Why? Because... I'm, in my mind, I'm playing the game. So although I find soccer j fun to watch, it doesn't necessarily bring me joy. Watching my son play does, but watching the sport doesn't necessarily do it. Does that make sense? Right? Um, of course, I'm cooking at the same time. Talking about Yeah, no problem. You do what you got to do, Miss H. Yeah, if I have, it, it, yeah, I'll do my best, Mrs. H. I've got a few things going on, but um, definitely I'll, I'll be able to do that for you, uh, for sure. <laughs> Pardon me. Are you, are you, Mrs. H, are you a part of the, um, my Discord channel? If not, get in there. Just so I can find you easily, please. I'm pretty sure I've already got you in there, but just in case I don't, I don't want to have to, to hunt around for you. You're at school, Morgan. <laughs> what are you doing? You're in trouble, Missy. You shouldn't be watching the stream while you're at school. Yeah, so, I mean... So, f for me, part of my downtime, my margin, is my gym time. So, on my calendar, I have the gym on there most days fight me bring it on you saw the way i ripped that shirt in nappy's video i do it i do it i ain't scared 
All right, awesome, Mrs. H. Thank you. But yeah, I mean the whole the whole point of margin is to get you to a place where you can rest, um, where you can just relax. Because just know that your your lack of margin does something else. It diminishes your ability to listen. Right? So we can look at this from a whole bunch of different ways. So listen to who? Listen to what? So take it from my standpoint for a second. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spirit person. I'm a, uh, as a believer, I have a faith element to my life. So I could be talking about this idea of hearing from God. Right? That my inability to rest, no problem, Miss Stage. My inability to hear from God could be the fact that I have no margin. I'm not, I'm too busy. I, I'm, or I'm confused because I'm so busy, I'm confusing what I'm hearing with what I'm thinking. Now, those of you that are spirit people <laughs> may not understand that. So you may, when you say, you know, you lose your capacity to hear. Maybe you lose capacity to hear your kids saying that they're that they're hurting, that they're being bullied at school, that they're whatever. That your spouse is having a bad day and you're like, yeah, yeah, and you're just too busy cutting up food, making dinner because it's the next thing on the list to do because it's five o'clock and the kids are already hungry. Right? So if, if you don't have the capacity to hear not only you're in your physical space, but in your spiritual space, if that's a space that you that you have, you're missing a lot. A lack of margin in your life is dev can be devastating. It literally will um, inhibit your ability to do almost anything. Uh, debilitating is a is a great way of saying it. Is a great way of putting it. One of the things that people need to do when it comes to this idea of margin is we need to learn how to be content. So, so why do we lack margin? So let's focus on this word content for a second. Yep, no problem. We're just talking about what it means to be content content, not content, but content. This idea of I am okay with my place, current, current place, my current allotment, as it were. Um, <coughs> so to be content means basically that, um, What I have is good enough. So what what am I what do I mean what do I mean by that? What is what do I what I have? Yeah, and and that's not unusual to say or think or know, right? This idea of I don't I just don't know people that are content. Like who's content? Like every, especially for me because I'm I'm what some would call a very driven person. So am I ever really truly content? I think the answer to that is is going to be no. I don't know that I'll ever truly be content. But what you can do for those people, and well, because again, you're not trying to convince anybody. This is for yourself, right? What you what you can do is is then learn to place things in their proper context and to put the proper value on them. So let's let's talk about both for a second. If I'm content. Let's talk about my house. I don't I don't have a mansion by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Quite the opposite. I live in a little 1,200 square foot, um, three bedroom house. Uh, it's got one and a half bathrooms, which is a half bathroom more than I guess you need. <laughs> it's uh, It's cozy. It meets all my needs. Could I live in a bigger house? Definitely. Could I have a pool in the backyard? I would love that. Could I have two bathrooms, three bathrooms, so that my kids don't make a mess of everything and me have to go clean up their mess before I can go take a shower or, you know, wash my face or do brush my teeth or whatever else? That would be great. 
But putting it into perspective, I have a house. I, I should be okay with that. There are a lot of people that don't have what I have. Right? That's content. So that, that's where putting things in context helps. Under, understanding, right, that we don't necessarily need more. And so the striving, this lack of margin, very often result is a result of chasing after things that we don't necessarily need. Our priorities are screwed up. Make sense? You following me? Um, I think as human beings, we all look for better and more. Absolutely. That's why in, in America, for example, uh, the sale of storage units and the building of storage units has skyrocketed since uh, the mid 80s to where uh, they can't build storage units fast enough. Why? Because people can't put enough crap in their houses. So they go and they rent these boxes to put all their crap into that they're never going to touch again. Right, So they get these, these massive storage units, pay hundreds of dollars a month to have them, to put stuff in that, uh, that they're never going to use any time in the next three to six months, if not years. And then they forget about them, and that's why they get a movie or a TV series called Storage Wars because goofballs like that forget that they've got these things and then they never use them again. Okay, so I had to move to a really small place after my parents got divorced. Yeah, and it's hard for what? Why? Because you, there's an adjustment that's made, right? So I, I'm in the exact same boat. When, uh, when I was living with my dad, when I moved out before I went to college, my dad had a, a fairly large home uh, on lots of land, several acres of property. When I moved out, I moved into literally a little basement apartment, a couple of hundred square feet, literally had two, had two rooms, three rooms in it. Had a living room, kitchen, which is one space, and then it had a, a bathroom and a bedroom. Uh, that's an adjustment. <laughs> in, in no backyard, like no, I had no space of my own outside. Now, do I live there with my wife and three kids right now? No, that's, that's for sure. Um, but throughout the stages of my life, we've progressively gotten into to different accommodations, not necessarily bigger, but just different accommodations that, that meet, uh, has continued to meet all of our need, both uh, realized and perceived, right? So this idea of contentment is, is not just uh, realizing that what I have is good enough, but also placing them in, in priority. So what do I mean by priority? So let's not put like having a Mercedes above having a car that gets us back and forth to work and, and doesn't put us into a place where we're needing to get another part-time job to pay for the car we drive, right? So, cause this happens a lot. I can think of three people, three or four people off the top of my head who I know right now that are very successful people, but have a second job so that they can drive a very expensive car. That is a priority issue. That is somebody that is not content and is doing things to try and change their contentment level by misaligning their priorities. Make sense? It is imperative that we learn how to be content when we're talking about how to create margin in our lives. The only way you can create margin is to be ruthless in the things that we are striving for. Ruthlessly cutting out the things that we think we need. Like I really want a Corvette. I do. I want one. The Z06 goes fast. Looks pretty. But that doesn't mean I'm going to go get three part-time jobs to pay that $1,200 bill a month I'll wait. I'm content. I'll drive my Jeep a couple more years, right? Until I get to a place where I can do that, where I don't have to strive beyond my margins. 
it's not going to affect me one way or another. It, it honestly won't affect my joy. If you think getting that Corvette now, satiating that appetite to have the Corvette now fixes that, <laughs> Zacho, yes, it does, brother. <laughs> the pizza hot topper. That, but that's exactly my point. People do the most ridiculous things. And then, and so I guess the car is kind of a bad thing because I was going to say, but then you never get to use it. But of course, you're using it to deliver pizzas, I guess. But I mean, it looks ridiculous because you're driving a Lambo to, <laughs> to deliver pizza, hut, pizza and wings. Um. What happens when you get the pizza sauce on your seats? Oh, boy. But the idea there is people do all this extra stuff to get the stuff that they want today. Right? But, Zacho, that, I mean, that's the beauty of, that's the joy of waiting and Till you can be in a place of contentment and margin where you can cruise in your in your Lambo without having to worry about that bill that you've got to do all this extra stuff. Now I'm, I don't know your situation. I'm I'm making a sub. I'm putting it in the context of me. You, I mean, you might have paid cash for that thing, but I could never. I would have to do many things. No, no, but it's a, but it's a relevant joke. It's very relevant, and it's it's on point because it makes the point of saying, people do that. It is not unusual to see people who just want that thing to do exceptionally weird and grossly misguided things, just to jump one step ahead. And that's a great example of how, how someone could do it, you know. Um, I'm gonna. I got something here. I want to. I want to read it, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you some context. It has. It has some uh, basis in scripture, but I'm gonna put it in secular terms, because I think it's very relevant. Uh, it's, quote unquote. I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and and again, I I use this phrase because it it really is my life it, to, to a to a t so i've learned what it what it is to be content whatever the whatever the circumstances i know what it is to be in need and i know what it is to have plenty i have learned the secret of being content in any in every situation whether well fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want i can do everything as long as i have strength you follow me? It's it's getting to that place where you can say I'm content. Now that's that's not to say we're never to strive for that Lambo or that Corvette, the Z06. Nice. Welcome back, Mrs. H. You just missed the best part of the stream, by the way. Just kidding. It's finding something. Right when you talk about priorities, it's, it's finding something that you can be um, content in and to share that joy with. Because really, that's what it comes down to. When you can, when you can share that contentment and that joy, your margin with somebody could be your kids, could be your dog. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. I was just joking with you, kiddo. Right, it's remembering where your true value comes from, and I can tell you your your true value is always going to come from the relationships that you have, not the things that you have. So we talk about our Lambos and we talk about the Corvettes and stuff, but but honestly, your true value is going to come from the depth and like breadth of your relationships. So, and that's and this is again, this gets back to the paper I want to write with regards to with regards to Twitch and the people that come into these chat rooms and have these discussions. And thank you, Best Buy, for sponsoring the stream. You guys are amazing. Um, relationships. Know this: healthy relationships will always make your life easier. Truth. The better your relationships, the more trust-based they are, the more obedience-based they are, 
the more we challenge each other to do better, the better your life is going to be, the more margin you're going to have, the more content you're going to be, and the more value you're going to have. In Mrs. H, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. My, my wife and I said the other day, and this, again, this is, does not count my virtual friends. I literally can count how many friends, like actual true friends, I have on one hand. And of those one hand friends, there's really only two that I would say anything to. And then I have my wife and my kids. So actual friends, and, and that is not, again, <laughs> that's me ruthlessly cutting out because I just don't have the time, right? What's up, Will? Oh. What's going on, buddy? Mm -hmm. One second, guys. You okay? Yeah, what's up? Oh, Are we streaming today? Say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, give me two seconds. I just don't know that we're, we're going to be set up. Give me 15 minutes Yeah. and we'll fine. go. Are you, what time are you good till? Okay, give me two minutes and I'll finish this up and we'll come get you. I just, we'd have to clean this up yeah. right here. I, I forgot that I left it all set up. Yeah. Hello, test, test. Oh, there we go. So, no, it was, it was me. I, I hit a mute button because somebody came in my office here. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the, again, that, that idea of relationships, it, it really does come down to this fact that y you've heard this term, many hands make light work, right? That's a true statement. That is the whole... That is why we have such trouble finding margin. The busier you get, the less time you have for relationships. Listen to me on this one. This is critical. You know why most people fall into like disarray and suddenly they can't figure stuff out or can't make ends meet or any number? It's because they've lost all of their support mechanisms. And, I, and support mechanism is not, a pay, is not a bank account. It's not a checking account. Your support mechanism is Uncle Tim. Your support mechanism is 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 morgue meme who is your neighbor in in close friend. <clears throat> and you're like, oh crap, I'm out of eggs and I'm baking this cake. And you go to morgue meme's house and say, morgue meme, can I borrow a, can I borrow a couple of dozen can I borrow a dozen eggs? And she's like, yep, here you go. It's the relationships that we have that are tr are that are our true rescue in time of need. It is not more stuff. We've confused things. We've, we've lost where we place our priorities. We place our priorities on Corvettes, <laughs> in lockers full of stuff, instead of the relationships around us. Because we think for some reason that that Corvette is going to make us feel great. And it does until you get that bill at the end of the month. And, but Mrs. H, listen to me. You don't need more friends. You just need good relationships. Take who you have. It's Again, take that word more out. It's not about more. None of this is a, hey, Celery Bear, what's up, buddy? It's not about more. It's about being content with what I have and making it the best. So whether it's my little 1200 square foot house or whether it's the two friends that I have, they are going to be the best. Yeah, no problem, buddy. Somebody type no problem for celery beer. Oh, I got it. I got it. 
right? So the the let me just um it, the the where we lose things it, again is in that thinking thinking that that new thing is going to somehow fix what we're talking about. <coughs> and the reality there is it's not. It's just not. The reality is, is that what's going to what's going to fix it when I come home and I'm had a bad day at work or you know or m my car broke down and and I walk in the front door what's going to fix the the car issue is yeah you need to be able to fix it but what's going to fix this which is what I'm talking about today not the car I'm talking about this what's going to fix this are the relationships that I have and and the value that I put in them ahead of time they're going to reinvest in me when I walk in the door and I'm not good. Right? But Mrs. H, that's fine. Do it to the best of your ability. If that's your support mechanism, if your kids and your partner are it, there's nothing wrong with that. If you build them up to a point where you have capacity to go and, and, and then to expand that relationship with a girlfriend beyond just a glass of wine? Or maybe you don't need to. Maybe you get enough from your, um, uh, your, your, your spouse or your, your partner and your kids. For me, I honestly get enough from my, part, from my wife and my kids, right? And, and my glass of wine with my girlfriend is, not my girlfriend, with my with my friends is at the gym. When I go to the gym, I have five or six guys there that I banter with for an hour and a half that we joke around with and all that kind of stuff. But that's it. I'm out. It's just my little recharge, relationship recharge, where I get to be silly and I'll be all kinds of funny and everything else and lift some weights, be macho for a little bit and then go home. But then the real <sighs> margin is created when I'm at home with the people that I love deeply, that I care about the most, and that I know when all of the crap hits the fan, th those four are the ones that I know will be there no matter what. All the guys at the gym and everything else are going to be gone. Yeah, I probably embarrass all my friends too. Right? And, and so you talk about trust. Trust is a big thing. Trust is huge. And, that, and that's why, I mean, I personally find it hard um, to have a lot of friends because there's, there's just not many people I can tell my junk to. Right? Because we all got junk. We all have stuff that we talk about and, or don't talk about. And I think it's scary sometimes. And, and I, I hesitate to use the word fear because I hate that word. It's misused way too much. And we're going to do a whole stream on fear one time. I think it's uh, it's going to be a, a great topic. Well, yeah, if we find it easier online because if we don't like what they say, we can just hit the power button. Okay, all done. Better. Susie was being a butthead, so I just shut her off. I muted her. And I, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you not to be embarrassed because it's a personal thing. But I, I think there's a community of service in there too at the same time where you're you're doing things for people, I think, Ms. H, that you haven't even begun to realize yet. <laughs> right? It, it's like what we do here at Rise Above. I, I, I don't think we've even seen the tip of the iceberg yet with regards to the impact that we've had on some of these kids. Even the kids that haven't successfully completed our, completed our program, I think there's years down the road where we're going to start seeing, you know, things that we never thought were, were possible. And I think, Mrs. H, that's where you're going to see years from now. Someone's going to randomly out of the blue pick you up and say, oh, you know, you remember that day when you were streaming and blah, 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 and you said that thing? Yeah, I didn't want to say anything because I was embarrassed in the stream, but you really helped me through whatever that thing was, you know? And Morgan, online is so easy. Why? Because it's one-dimensional. It's very, it's very one-dimensional. 
you only get what I give you, period. You, you, that idea of smelling fear, that's a, that's a real thing, right? That, that it's not just a phrase; it's a real thing. To say I smell fear, the the idea that in person, I can I can read you like a book. If you're here in front of me, and I'm especially if I'm interviewing you, the right person, and I'm the right person, I can I could tell you your life story almost by the way you're just the way you're sitting across from me, let alone before you've even said a word. And that, that's why it's so easy to be um, social online because I don't have to give you what I want to give you. I can hide the rest. You know, I don't I mean a kid online, 14 years old or 20 years old, chatting and chat, being all macho and bravo and tons of bravado and all that kind of stuff. You can't see that his mom's in the back shooting heroin or that, you know, his dad's passed out on the couch or his, his, uh, Little, little sister who's molested by her uncle is in the room next to him and he knows all about it, just doesn't know who to tell yet. Like there's so many things that we just don't. And, and, and for me, I say that because these are the kids that I work with every day. <coughs> that's the challenge. That, that's why we, Mrs. H, that's why we close our doors so often to other relationships because our first thought is you don't understand. And that's why I say to you, take the time to make the margin, be intentional, be content with the, th with the three people or two people that you have that are super close to you. And remember where your true value comes from, them first. If you realize that, You'll do it to, to the full glory of them, right? You hope your story helps someone speak out. Yeah, I hope it does too. That's that's. It's a starting point for a lot of people, just to say the words, right? Uh, don't say it. Probably won't. It definitely will. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Somebody hearing you talk about it will definitely help somebody else talk about it. And, and know that you're laughing and joking. Put somebody else at ease, so that they so that they can cross that bridge, right? Here's another phrase. And I saw that all labor and all achievement sprung from man's envy of his neighbor. This too is meaningless. A chase after the wind. The fool finds his hands and ruins himself. Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. I'm going to repeat that because this is a mouthful, but critical. Listen. And I saw that all labor and all achievements spring from man's envy of his neighbor. In other words, I do all this stuff to chase after something, to get something that somebody else has. Why? Because I'm not content. This too is meaningless. It's a chasing after the wind. The fool finds his hands and ruins himself. Oh, I can do this thing. So then I start doing that thing because I think it's going to get me to a place that I'm currently not at. Better one handful with tranquility, with contentment. It's another way of saying tranquility. than two handfuls with toil, with work and chasing after the wind. It's huge. So let's talk about something else real quick. Um, one thing that we all have in our lives, but very few people recognize, is this thing called rhythm. We all have rhythms. Some call it a schedule. <laughs> but we all have rhythms. This uh, idea of rest or sleeping and waking hours and seasons. And there's, there's rhythms all around us. Um, and one of the things that we are first or quick to disrupt 
when it comes to our rhythms is rest. That's one of the first things we throw away in our rhythm cycle. It's one of the first things to get chucked out when we say, um, I need more time. What, so what do we sacrifice when we say, I need more time? Rest. The time that I take to sit down and edify myself through reading, through um, do watching documentaries, spending time with my family, uh, physical activity, sport, whatever edifies you as a person. Again, this is about you right today's stream. It's not about everybody around you at this point. That, that's another stream. But when we're talking about rhythms, one of the most important things that we can talk about is, is rest. If, if, if there is an essential part of any rhythm cycle of your life that needs to be constantly in place, it's rest. Sometimes you look at people with, who argue with their mothers or someone, think, do you know how much I would give? Yeah. And you, and you know, Ms. H, for years, I was that guy um, with my mom and my dad. I was that guy that fought constantly with my parents that um, did not have a good relationship. And there was a, a shift, um, I want to say 10 years ago, where I, I had to correct that because uh, I, I realized as as I started moving in my life and, and getting into different spots and roles and jobs and whatnot, that uh, I was losing, I was about to permanently lose those relationships if I didn't do something drastic. And um, I just finally one day decided to do everything I could to, uh, to salvage those relationships. And I'm thankful that I did. I'm not saying they're perfect to this day, but uh, yeah, we definitely uh, at least talk to each other now. And I would say we genuinely love each other. <laughs> but there are folks like um, my wife lost her mother a few years ago. And that is just a void that can't be filled by anybody. And uh, Veronica, my wife, often talks about this void that's in her life. And uh, I'm feeling blessed right now that there is a young lady that has come into our circle of influence who is very similar to Veronica and uh, Veronica's mom. And, uh, and um, it's one of those things where uh, uh, Veronica's actually said, I think this could be someone to help replace my mom. So I'm not sure chair-wise what you've got. Uh, we have a guest coming in two seconds, guys, so bear with me for two seconds. Um, is there a chair there? Oh, there is yeah. a chair there. Yeah. Okay. You might want to just move, see if we can move that monitor off the side yeah. and then pull the mic closer to you. Pull it as close as possible. Just don't block your face. Um, give me two seconds, guys. I'm going to help Will out with his mic. That scared me. I was moving the wrong one, wasn't I? Just do this. That makes so much more sense. And then we can hopefully not block the screen too much. Yeah. Sweet. And then just lean into that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, so what I what I, you're not on yet. So okay. uh, give me two seconds. I got your mic is on, but you're not on. So uh, I'm going to bring Will into the conversation to talk about this a little bit today. Um, and some of you have already met Will. Some of you have not. And I apologize if you've not. Um, but I'll bring I'll bring Will in in two seconds. I just got some things to do. While he's doing that. I am loving all the new uh, pictures and emotes and stuff. And yeah, it's really cool. Show me another day. So well, uh, can everyone hear Will okay? Just somebody say something um, to that effect, please. Yes, let me know if I need to be closer or farther away or. Yeah, I can. I should be able to adjust your mic a little hear bit. Hear my breathing or <laughs> anything. That's what people. My mic at home is bad. I always catch my breathing. Yeah, it looks like you're good. Okay. A little, a little bit louder. I turned a little, you up a little louder. Bit. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I just I turned you up on here. Awesome. You should be good. All right. So, um, so uh, I'm gonna finish my thought, Will, and then I'll bring you into the conversation. Cool. 
So in this idea of, of making rest part of your rhythm, uh, you, you really need, you know, and, and again, from a, a scriptural standpoint, a, again, being a pastor, this whole, uh, a poifect, thank you very much. Uh, it, you know, this idea of six days of shall you labor and then the seventh day rest, this idea of even in that, um, God built into our lives this idea of, of having rest as, as a part of who we are uh, as people. So, and it, but it, again, it's a normal cycle. Uh, when, you look, when you think of most Western societies, uh, we, we have a day of rest or days of rest built into our work schedules. It's, yep. it's a normal thing. It's been part of who we are. So <clears throat> one of the things I would, I would say uh, as uh, kind of four or five points What's up, Mr. Soggy Waffles? Uh, welcome back to the stream, buddy. Um, before I bring Will in, a couple of points. Um, let me see, one, two, three, four-ish points that uh, I that I want you to throw into this whole idea of, of making margin. Um, ensure that you have a day off, a literal day off. I don't mean a day off like Saturday's a day off from work and then you spend all day doing other jobs, hmm. you know. Um, we need to schedule better. Uh, happy Monday to you too, Poggy. You know, we need to have a legitimate day off where we're just doing stuff that brings us joy. Um, the other thing I would say to that is uh, practice the idea of slow. You know, whether it be in the evening when you're with your kids, Mrs. H, this is what kind of what I was saying earlier, this idea of perfecting your relationships with each other, those who are closest to you, those who... Um, uh, whom you love the most and hold the, the closest, practice the idea of slow. The, the, and, and part of that is this idea of, of listening. Be slow to speak, quick to listen. Um, hear what they have to say because it's in those moments when, when, you're, um, when you have no margin, your capacity to hear diminishes greatly. And if you can't hear what your loved ones are saying, you really lose the ability to to be in complete relationship with them to the point where you help them. Um, and, and I would say this idea of practicing slow to back up one step means that this thing, this cell phone, needs to be gone. Not in the room, not part of the equation. Get in the habit of shutting that sucker off and just getting it out of the picture entirely. That, that, that's both. That's a both and. Like for, for us, for example, at my home at the dinner table, there are no electronics allowed in our in our home at, the, at dinner time. Mm -hmm. um, and the other part of practicing slow is if you don't already take a nap, <laughs> try it. I mean, I don't nap. Mm. I can't, I can't, I just have a hard time sleeping during the day. Sorry. But but just lying down, just, mm -hmm. just lie down and, and <sighs> breathe for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the topic today uh, will is this idea of margin. Mm. It's the idea of of, of uh, slowing down the pace of our lives um, to get beyond what is so to get beyond to space that is beyond the necessary. So it's necessary that I'm here seven to ten hours a day. That's necessary. Mm -hmm. What what's beyond the necessary though is this space that I fill with other crap. Mm -hmm the gym, the board meetings, uh, soccer games, uh, any other thing that I decide to do in that, what I'm talking about here is this idea of prioritizing that stuff. Mm -hmm. What, what are the, what are the things that are necessary and what are the things that just steal my joy mm -hmm. that, that rob me of the ability to have that margin that I need yeah. to be in full relationship. Cause if, if, if you, if you are not in margin, right, the lack of that margin, it gets back to that idea of, of I, I'm not going to hear you. When you want to talk to me, I ain't going to hear you. Yeah. It's, it's just not going to be possible. Um, you find that hard? Yeah, extremely hard. Um, I think because our routines change a lot. And so, like... You're speaking personally or... Personally, personally, at least yeah. for me. Like... Um, this summer I had a, oh, also, by the way, hi, uh, Mr. Waffles. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, this summer I had a lot of time. So it was easy for me to make that margin. In fact, I had too much of a margin, but mm -hmm. we can talk about that later. But um, 
now with work again and a busy semester in school, I used to, you know, have time more in the mornings. Now I don't. I need to find that time again to have that margin. Um, so it's very difficult because you always have to be reassessing when exactly. you do it. Yeah. So would you agree then, <laughs> and we touched on this briefly earlier, is this idea of sometimes our margins can be less or greater depending on a season of our lives. Mm -hmm. So right now you're talking about this idea that you have work, you have your master's degree that you're working on mm -hmm. and some other things, obviously just buying a house, just getting married, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, now that the marriage wedding is over, that space opened up a little bit. You have more margin that you were using for planning that is now opened yeah. up for other stuff. Mm -hmm. When school is done, that I'll same huge... thing. You'll have <laughs> can't wait. a huge segment of margin is going to open up for you mm -hmm. to then hopefully rest in um, and not just fill with another thing mm -hmm. that's going to steal your joy. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been talking a lot about this idea for me, particularly my, my joy is a spiritual joy that I'm speaking of not just the joy of my, my relationships and my, my marriage and stuff. And I'm, I mean, Mrs. H, I mean, you talked about this idea. Um, you actively try to not hear your other half. Yeah, there are moments where that's a, an obvious thing too, but. Yeah, uh, thank you. It was uh, almost a year now. It's been almost a year. It's yeah. crazy how fast I mean, that went. Like 24 days? Yeah. Ish. Phew. Yeah. You got all your little fur babies running around the house? Yes. Toby and Ted, they're crazy. Cats that yeah. just want to claw everything. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And I think also for me, but I'm sure other people, margin is hard to to keep going because, uh, like, I do something I love to do, like longboard or climb or play video games, and then I do that too much, and it doesn't become a margin anymore. It becomes a... Mm -hmm. Uh, waste and I don't feel filled up right so mm -hmm. yeah nice so I don't know if you saw what Mrs. H said yeah. she gave you some marital advice there um, <laughs> I swear you guys have like a blog somewhere that you keep in touch with each other and you're like okay sister I need your help here right now um, yeah so I mean margin is one of those things with that is is easily stolen mm. right so so the more because we're in very social jobs mm-hmm and I, I say social in the sense that we work with a lot of different organizations, a lot of different groups, a lot of different people um, and individuals. I guess that's the same as people, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's very easy for them to say, oh, I need, I love, oh, you're so good at whatever, but you know what I mean? Or Will, hey, you, oh, man, you, dude, you're awesome at this. I really love it if you could come and do this. And this this idea of, and, and Morgan, I touched on this earlier with you modding for 17 different channels, is this idea that, people can compliment you into stealing your joy. Yeah. I, I can compliment you to where you're willing to sacrifice your margin for the fact that because I complimented you, you think you now owe me something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's almost like, oh, because you gave me a gift. Now I got to give him a gift. Oh, dang it. Oh, because he came to my wedding and he gave me a hundred dollars in a, in a card to, whatever to support me that means i have to go to his wedding now and, so, and give him a hundred dollars in the card the reality of that is no you don't mm -hmm. <laughs> you have means i can't afford to put a hundred dollars in, in a wedding card guess what i don't do put a hundred dollars in a wedding card it's not practical mm -hmm. it's not within my margins to do so now i could i do that sure i could do that i could put a hundred dollars in a card and I could and I could give it at a wedding or to a birthday or I could, you know, do all these things. But the mm -hmm. reality is something else is going to suffer, like my mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or or my 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 kids dent uh, uh, braces. Mm -hmm. Or my co kids college tuition. Some if it's the same thing with your margin. If you don't keep your margin, your time, your joy time. What happens? Something else suffers. Yeah. And it's uh, what suffers? People. Usually. Our relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The ones we care about the most. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's something we say in the ministry world, uh, which is you can't give what you don't have. Right? So if you don't have that margin and you're helping people and you feel stressed in life and all that stuff, like you can't help other people with yeah. that because you don't have it. 
Yeah, um, it, it, yeah. 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 I agree with you a thousand percent on that. Yeah. And in Saga, you don't owe me nothing, buddy. Just remember that. Ooh, I'd love to go to the UK. That'd be fun. Ooh. <laughs> I've never been. We actually uh, just talked, Veronica and I just talked about there's a, a trip to the UK for one of the boards that I'm on. Hmm. That's part of our training, and we're just trying to figure out what trip to go on next. Cause we went to Hawaii for this other trip, hmm. and uh, so somebody else is paying for it, so we're thinking, That's cool. <laughs> why not? It's one of the bonuses of, of being on these boards sometimes, yeah. even though if it... So it, there are instances where, you know, that creates some margin as much as it, it takes some sometimes. It, yeah. It gave us a beautiful 10-day vacation, so... Hmm. Um. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, when we talk about, so I, I want to talk about this idea of contentment. What does it mean to be content? So, if you were to define content, how would you define content? Uh, I would define contentment um, being a a choice mm -hmm. uh, to choose how you uh, a choice of perspective mm -hmm. on your life, really, uh, regardless of situations or, or specific instances of whatever happens yeah. um, choosing to be at peace with where you are mm -hmm. uh, yeah being okay with what you have mm -hmm. or don't have yeah or you know in relationships or stuff or money or yep um, whatever it is yeah whatever yeah mm -hmm. I mean as uh, who was it earlier that was saying oh Zacho was saying you know so it so it's not okay that I have my Pizza Hut car topper on top of my Ferrari or uh, my Lamborghini because uh, the idea there is he's having to run pizzas to pay for his Lambo, mm -hmm. you know, because um, he's not content with driving a Toyota. You know, he's got a good job. He makes good money. He could drive a Toyota and have no extra payment. He was joking, but the idea mm -hmm. there was there are people out there that do that, mm -hmm. that just to drive that extra nice whatever it is, they do all these extra things that, they really don't ever get a chance to enjoy the thing that they're doing all these extra things for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I think about what drives that, what drives discontentment. I think a lot of it is people mm -hmm. and through media, through mm -hmm. um, relationships. Like why does he even want that car? Mm -hmm. Probably because people are going to like it. And then in turn, maybe like cool. him. Yeah. And this, yeah. Yeah. So there, uh, the, I, I said this phrase with it. Um, this is from Philippians. Mm -hmm. I've learned to be content with uh, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content um, in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do anything through him who gives me strength. Right? Or I can do anything as long as I have strength through the secular mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Right? This idea that Contentment really is right where you are. Now, that's not to say that if circumstances changed and I got a promotion at work, that it's not okay to have that Lambo <laughs> or to buy a bigger house. Or, But again, it's within your margin. Uh, am I sacrificing anything margin-wise? I'm not talking – understand I'm not talking about money. If you have the money, if you have the resources to do what you need to do it. I'm not, that's not why I'm here. <laughs> I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying if you want to have less stress in your, in your life, to have more joy, first understand who you are and who you are not. Second, understand what your margins are and live within them. Fair statement? Yeah. So how many of our students that we get here do you think have margin? This may be a trick question. I don't know. Uh, they don't even know what it is. I, I would say, yeah, I would agree with you. I, I would say two things with that. I, I don't think they know what it is, and I would say it's probably zero. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, unless, unless their parents have it and their parents taught them that. And how many of our students' parents have it and have taught them that? Uh, none. I, well, they've tried to teach probably if they have it. If they've got it. One, one, I think one. Yeah, it, maybe. Tried to, yeah. Maybe. But, yeah. In, all, in the five years that we've been doing this, I could probably count on one hand 
the amount of students that have come in here with any sort of margin. Yeah. Right. Whether well, they're, they're they're here purely out of selfish ambition and they've done something just to spite somebody as yeah. opposed to um, this lack of uh, contentment in their lives and the overwhelming level of stress that they're under. Mm hmm. Right. So think about that for a second. As your stress level rises and your joy decreases, you are more likely to act out. Mm -hmm. If you're a wounded animal and you're trapped in a corner, you're in survival mode. That's all you know. Mm -hmm. And if you're in survival mode and that's all you know, the moment there's any pressure on you, what happens? You do whatever you feel like you need to do in the moment. You need yeah. to survive. You lash out. You jump on tables. You flip tables. You punch people. You spit on people. You uh -huh. swear at people. You burn buildings down. Sometimes you self-medicate. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Does that sound like any of our students? <laughs> All of them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Quite but a few. It, yeah. We can also, I mean, see that in everyone's life to, to some degree. Like, Absolutely. To some degree. Yeah. Everybody, everybody gets there at some point. But again, healthy people go through seasons of that mm -hmm. where you have these high points and these low points and you have good days and you have bad days. But the more margin you have, the less that cycle swings so violently. The more margin you have, you're going to have little blips. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as Mrs. H, you talked about not listening to your partner. <laughs> you know, even, even though you, you argue or have bad days, they go away. It's just a bloop and yep. you move on to the next day. You still love each other. You still whatever, joke around and poke each other and do all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. When our kids come in here, none of that margin is there. We call it capacity, right? You have, they have no more capacity to deal with your crap, mm -hmm. right? And so our job is to build capacity. You know, the way you can say is we, our job is to build margin in these kids' lives. Yeah. Yeah. So Eddie was on stream last week. So Eddie's a prime example of a kid who has learned how to have capacity or who's been given the ability to have capacity mm -hmm. and it is now building this idea of margin. Yep. <clears throat> now, I don't know, were any of you here last week for, for Eddie? You, did you end up seeing the stream? I watched some of it, yeah. Yeah. So if, if, if you saw the stream, you would have saw very articulate, very calm, Thoughtful. Um, very thoughtful mm -hmm. uh, young man sit and do an interview with me from from Will's seat. Morgan, yeah, that's right. You were here. And he was, a, I mean, Morgan, what was your opinion of, of, of Eddie? I'd love to hear what you thought of, of, the, of who Eddie was. Because the reality is, who was Eddie six months ago? <laughs> <laughs> I, I laugh because... There's a reality yes. to that. There is there is a definite reality to who Eddie was six months ago. Mm -hmm. I watched the this some of the vod and it's like, wow, like this is not what I would expect from him. Me the cube there. from Eddie. Like even even in summer school, like not even that long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah very reflective and able to talk about himself that was like he was always open and friendly mm -hmm. but collected and, and thoughtful couldn't he, mm -mm. he couldn't string couldn't at all no so I, I, let's see if i can show it here so anyone recognize one of these things these are called fidget cubes oh it was still a little kid absolutely more I mean, yeah respectful and goofy for sure so these are fidget cubes and if you if you listen to this um it clicks and makes noises and, and does all kinds of things, right? So when he was sitting over there, he because I have a bunch of fidget things that guests can play with while they're over there, so they, they can do something with their hands because some guests get pretty nervous while they're on. My personal favorite. While they're live. Yeah, <laughs> that's just a squeeze toy. It doesn't make noise. So Eddie picked this fidget cube up, and while he was on stream, um, he had enough – thought process to, to think to himself oh so they're going to hear this they're going to hear the clicking of this fidget cube on stream so i should stop and pick up a different fidget mm -hmm. and and i i saw him put it down and, and grab some. I, I didn't think that's what he was doing though mm -hmm. and i actually heard him say to another student after the stream was done 
oh yeah, it was great stream, blah blah. blah. It was a lot of fun. But, oh, at one point I was playing with the the one of the fidget, the white fidget cube on the desk, and I realized it was making noise, so I put it down because I didn't. I thought it would be weird on the stream that people would hear the clicking on the stream. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Who is this kid? Yeah. <laughs> and it was just one of those things where. Um, that is absolutely what we're talking about because this is a young man that has a ton of stress and has absolutely had the joy, his joy ripped from him yep. um, his entire life. Yep. And in getting to know us, I believe we've given him some joy back. Mm -hmm. um, the stress, at least in this part of his day, has waned. Yeah. And he gets it. Yep. Um, he started to figure out his life a little bit. and yeah. Yeah. Today, uh, I was driving in at like 8.25 or something. Yeah. And Eddie was just got dropped off. He was walking in. And he waved at me. He's like, hey, I made on time. You know? Because like he's seen mm -hmm. from us. Hopefully it was from us. But he's seen during his time here what it can be. Mm -hmm. And he wants it now. Yeah. He wants it back. Yeah. And, and you know what? He, he Part of his joy is... Uh, pleasing us, you know, making us happy. The fact that we are happy when he's on time excites him right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he is legitimately, it's a way, it's positive affirmation for him. Yeah. I can do this thing. Look at, I can do this mm -hmm. in, in, you know, and that's a huge thing. So yeah. Uh, more sh stress balls or squish toys. Or, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We actually thought about getting a little pet at Rise Above, but allergies and stuff. Yeah, we'd have to get a very specific type of pet. And the thing with, if you get a dog, it's, like, you know, who takes it during the yeah, summer because exactly, we're off yeah. for weeks at a time sometimes. And mm -hmm. um, a cat could work, yeah. but then you run into the whole allergy thing. Yeah. And so how do you get a cat that's yeah. hyperallergenic? And so, but yeah, stress balls are perfect for that. Um, in fact, I should have some at my desk. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just they're just good. They're just good. I have. have like a little... Um, I don't know what it's called, but like a little box with like sand in it and like little rocks. A little and like Zen garden. Little, yeah, a little Zen garden um, that without fail, if a student plays with it, they play with it every time. Every they, so they come every in, time, it's every time. It's thing. Eh? Yeah, it's their thing. That's awesome. Um, I like that. I've, I've thought about touching it too, but then I, I see it as artwork mm. and I don't like erasing someone's artwork. Yeah. You know, so I go in there and I'm like, ah, no, I can't touch that. So <laughs> many times they like carve it and then they flick it by accident and like there's sand on the ground. But <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you're yeah. running the sand? So. Yeah. Um, I remember when my uni had a day where we made our own stress balls. Yeah, we do. We do that here too. The kids make stress balls. We just have to find a way to have to not use the flour and yeah. either find stronger balloons or something because ours keep breaking and yeah. get flour or whatever the product is that we use all I over think the place. Last year, one of the students was throwing at the wall, and it exploded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Had flour everywhere. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, mm -hmm. stress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, like that example mm -hmm. with Eddie is like the goal. Mm. It, it's 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 what we do. And, and I can see that in my own life growing up when that switched. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just really encourages me to see that. And then having new students come in today and knowing where, how we can help them. Yeah. And then not being able to yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Because um, sometimes we get students in, um, and today was one of those days mm -hmm. where they are at capacity. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that people will be quick to do in these situations, and I'm one of them, um, is to see that situation and go, oh, it's just not going to work. Hmm. Uh, it's important to step back and understand for a second that we don't know what happened at home before the student got here. Um, we don't know what fight took place. We don't know what meal did or did not happen. We don't know uh, how they woke up. any number of things. Yeah. yeah. Whether they were on the floor, whether they were in a comfy bed with pillows and blankets or yeah, we don't know any of that. So and <clears throat> it's hard sometimes to give a, a grumpy, belligerent, uh, unapologetic, student grace <laughs> um, and often you have to step away and kind of breathe for a minute yeah yeah just today when we were struggling with some of that and I just like 
went in the life skills room and just like broke down because I wanted to help the student so bad mm -hmm. and he was resisting not because of me but because of his life yeah, yeah. and like it just broke my heart because he has so such big walls mm -hmm. and he put them there for reason people don't put walls for no reason yep. and those reasons broke my heart um, so what you're what are, you're saying is this kid hasn't learned to trust us yet, doesn't no. believe what we're saying. Yeah, I was saying that to him, yeah. and I'm like, I care about you. And he's like, How can you just care about me? You met me two hours ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the fact that you came in here mm -hmm. means I care. And how do you teach a student that? How do yeah. you how do you show a student that? You know, like. Yeah. So I, and, I mean, I ask yeah. you guys, how do you show a student that? How, how do you take a student in that situation that is literally the bottom one percent of the one percent in the mm -hmm. school system? Um, who have never been shown any amount, of, especially recently, by the yeah. time they get to us, you got to remember, they've gone through the ringer a thousand times yep. by this point. The, any amount of grace that had was to be given was given a long time ago. Um, and the less grace that's given, the higher the walls go. So then they, they the, high, at the highest point, <laughs> that student shows up at our door. Yep. Um, and then to hear him laughing during lunch. Just the best. Yeah. Like, So how do we, how do we, that kid's going to show up tomorrow, <clears throat> Tuesday, the 24th of September at 830. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we have to convince him that we're absolutely, as I say, sold out for this kid. Right? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? How do you convince somebody? that has been convinced long ago that you can't trust anybody, that he can trust you. That's honestly, that's the question we try to answer every day. Some, some kids, it clicks super quick. Um, some kids, uh, this young man might be one of them. It takes a, a couple of minutes longer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy. I mean, it depends on the hurts. Depends on a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think I think the the best answer to that is um, our job in this is to um, make this as stress free as possible, as long as possible. Yep. Even when the proverbial crap's hitting the fan, is to not over respond, to not overreact, uh, to just sit quietly and yeah give that kid a chance to say, hey, we're not, you know, that thing just happened and you notice you're still here. We didn't kick you out like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yes. So. Don't let stress steal your joy. Um, know that a lack of margin uh, inhibits your ability to hear, to hear what? To hear the people around you, to hear your spirit man or woman for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it's, it really steals your contentment because even if you want to be content uh, in stuff, if you're stressed out, you can't be because you're focused on making this, the pain stop. Mm -hmm. And that's what stress is, is a pain, right? It's like a thorn in your side. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately, it's it's. I think a lot of it's uh, is centered on this idea of value. If I don't have value in my inherent self worth, in who I am as a person, and in what I'm created to be, um, that means I'm going to be striving after something else to find my value, mm -hmm. my place in life, my s status. Same thing. Yeah. How much money I have in the bank. Uh, what car I drive, Zacho, you know? Um, yeah, I think I think that's a big part of how all of this is interconnected. I, I just think that, um, yeah, value is a pretty good starting point for all of this starting to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one thing that we have to reassess, you know, in our own lives, but also their students, their values. Mm -hmm. A lot of their values are like, I don't want to look dumb. I don't want to be, 
you know. Well, it's rooted in embarrassment, right? Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. embarrassment and and trying to trying to help them realize that we don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we we really don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could, so so let me ask you a different. What is the number one occupation most of our kids want to get into, especially uh, the boys? Pro athlete or pro gamer yep. or something. And so I ask you, um, why do you think that they want to do either of those two jobs? Because people like those people. They're popular. Mm-hmm. And money. They make a lot of money. Yeah, and because people like people with money. I'm going to be so famous. Yeah. And if I have lots of money, that means people like me. Yep. Um, and so what they're saying is, I want to have all these relationships. It, it's not mm-hmm. honestly, it's not about the Lambo. The reason why yeah. they want the Lambo is because they think it's going to attract attention. Yeah. And why do I want attention? Because I want you to like me. Mm-hmm. It's about relationships. <laughs> it's always about relationships. Mm-hmm. No problem, man. Get to work. Goodbye. Nice to see you again. Get your butt to work. You got to make that five bucks so you can sub next month. <laughs> GG bro later. Yeah, I think, you know, Sue, Veronica's mom, um, her favorite line was back it up. Hmm. Back it up. Sure, that's great. Great statement. Back it up. What does it mean to like say prove that? It. Yeah. Yeah. Back it up. Not even just back it up in the sense of prove it, but okay, say I'm, I'm, I'm content. Well, back it up. Why are you content? Well, I'm content because I have a house. Well, why do you have a house? Back it up. I have a house because I, I I got a job. Okay, well, where'd you get the job? Back it up. It's like asking why. Why? 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 Yeah, whatever. <laughs> don't don't waste your money, man. Thanks, I Take it easy, buddy. Um, you know, and, and I think if, if you say that to yourself enough, you're always going to get back to, oh, my gosh, I got this job because, you know, Uncle, I always use Uncle Tim as the reference because <laughs> mm-hmm. Uncle Tim knew uh, uh, Mrs. Smith who owns the company and she, he introduced me to Mrs. Smith and I just happened to have a skill that she was looking for. And both, that's always the case. Mm-hmm. It, like how I got this job. My at the time fiance, her mm-hmm. roommate was working here. Yeah. And, oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. all about that. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. And, Say hello to so and so, and suddenly so and so says hello to a new job. Mm-hmm. Right? And I was looking for seven months for a ministry job in Jackson that wasn't a church. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of us. No. But it, basically, what I'm saying is it all comes down to um, your relationships that you have, your ability to have the space that you need, margin that you need to create the contentment um, comes down to how healthy are my relationships. Mm-hmm. The less healthy your relationships, I guess I'm playing with that. <laughs> I was playing with the fidget cube. <laughs> um, the less healthy your relationships are, the less margin you're going to have. Yeah. Believe that? Yeah. Do you have active proofs of it in your life? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can tell when my margin is going because my relationship with the people closest to me is more strained. It's breaking down. Yeah. It's like the ratio of fun fun times versus not as fun times <laughs> is more. It's definitely more. Yeah, or yeah. or I just don't reach out yeah. to those other people that are like friends. You know, like yeah. I, I, I recently started talking to some of my friends that were in the wedding with me mm-hmm. that I haven't to in a while. And I'm like, well, that kind of sucks. What happened? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe because my, my margin was gone and I felt like I didn't have any time. I felt like I didn't, you know, I was busy. Mm-hmm. I wasn't busy. Well, I was, but. You're, you were. Yeah. But I mean, you're, again, you had priorities, but they're yeah. just not where you wanted them. You mm-hmm. real, And that's where you probably realized that your margin was in the wrong spot. Mm-hmm. You're 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 placed your emphasis on the wrong syllable, mm-hmm. <laughs> as that say goes. Yep. Emphasis. Yeah. It's on the wrong syllable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and and that makes it hard to to really find. So what you're saying in that moment is you valued relationship, but you had lost, you lost it somewhere. Mm-hmm. 
because you you'd placed um, your time elsewhere. And again, that gets back to the whole idea of, of rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. we were in here when I was talking about rhythm. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. And this idea of, you know, we have seasons in our lives, literal seasons like spring, summer, fall, um, as well as seasons in our lives. You know, when we talk about school and work and, you know, even seasons like uh, rhythms to our day, mm -hmm. right? To when you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you eat normally, when you, like for me, I have very defined rhythms because my schedule is so stinking tight, mm -hmm. right? So I think that uh, being aware of your rhythms makes... Um, makes it easier to identify when you're about to start feeling some stress. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. All right. Anything you want to add to the conversation before we take off? No, I think, I think it's good. I love this topic. Uh, I've thought about it a lot and studied it a lot in my grad school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always need to do better at it. <laughs> I we all do. Be better. Yeah, we all, we all do. And this is a, this is a topic I will, I will likely revisit um, mm -hmm. again in the future because uh, just with some, some more in-depth, maybe we'll focus on um, specific elements um, of, of the – and both we'll talk about the idea of day off, practicing slow mm -hmm. <clears throat> and being slow to speak and listen um, as, a, as a topic in itself so that we can figure out how to do that better. Either way, um, thanks for coming in, Will. Yeah. Appreciate you. We're going to try and do this as often as possible mm -hmm. and to, to get you involved uh, in the stream fairly re frequently. If not you, um, we'll substitute you once in a while with somebody else. Sweet. <laughs> All right, buddy. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks, Will. Take it easy, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, as we as we close out the day, I just I think it's, it's um, imperative that you sit down, each of you, and do a time study. Look at your day. Look at where you're making time to fit in the relationships that you have. Because you want to know why you have stress in your relationships. You want to figure out why you're not content with what you have or don't have. Um... Figure out where you're placing your value. I think if you, if you, I don't think, I know, that if you place your value in your relationships first, I guarantee you that your stress level is going to go down and your contentment is going to go up exponentially. Not just a little bit, but exponentially. Why? Because those relationships are going to fill the void of your for your desire for stuff. Make sense? I hope it does. Thank you for all you guys that tuned in today. Thank you for those that um, offered insights, uh, were vulnerable, and, and gave input to the topic. I know uh, sometimes these subjects can be, can be hard to offer insight to or to give uh, feedback on, and I appreciate you guys every time you do uh, participate and, and become a part of this uh, community and the topics that we talk about. So thanks. Don't be afraid to go down below and check out the new, uh, some of the new stuff I've put down there, as well as to click on the subject link so you can add subject requests to the list. Um, I always like hearing from you guys. And uh, if you haven't already, um, get into Discord. Discord is a thing. I have a new spot in there where you can uh, post your your pet working out videos or pictures or just pet pictures, whatever. And um, if you want to post videos or request uh, certain exercise videos, by all means, we can do that as well. We can figure something out to make that happen. So uh, great. Again, guys, thanks for coming to the gym and being a part of the stream. We will see you all guys. See you guys all next time. Later.